Chen Chui returns with a folder. He tells Yang that all his things are inside the folder already. He tells him that he can check the folder out and that if he has any problem, he can ask immediately, and they will fix it for him. He tells Chen that he doesn't have to worry. He says that he knows Chen is a very disciplined person and he isn't someone who will mess with his things, so he is rest assured that everything is going the way they should. He tells Chen that he pleads with them all at the management of the company, and that they should continue to help him manage the building. Chen calls all the other staff. He tells them to come over and welcome Yang with him. They all bow to welcome him. He greets them all, and he tells them that they should all go back to work. It's time for him to ensure he punishes his former employer. He asks Chen about his former company telling him that he wants to know more about the people that rented floor 15. Chen asks him to hold on, and he checks the computer to bring out all the information about the people who rented floor 15. They see that the occupant is Zhang Jingan, and his contract in that building expires by the end of the month. He tells Chen that it has just happened that their lease is coming up, and he really needs to brag about his accomplishment, so he tells Chen that they should go up and talk with Zhang and Chen says yes. They leave for his former company. As they are about to get there, Chen tells Yang that he is sorry, but he has an appointment with another client who is coming in to ask about their rent that day. So Chen couldn't enter into the office with Yang, and Yang tells Chen that he can pick up his call and he will enter the office on his own first. He enters the finance company, and he meets his former colleagues. He greets them and tells them that it looks like they are all busy with work. They are shocked that he had the audacity to come back to that office, considering how he had left. One of his colleagues who are concerned about him comes to meet him. He was him why he had resigned and tells him that they should go and apologize to Mr. Zhang and manager Lai together. He appreciates his colleague's kind gesture, but he says he isn't there to apologize. He says he is there for his salary, which Zhang didn't pay him before he left. He screams that they should call Zhang for him so Zhang can pay him what he owes him. He shouts that Zhang should stop hiding in the office like a coward and he should come out. Zhang comes out with pride. He asks why Yang is shouting at his office and asks him what kind of place he thinks he is. He asks him if he thinks he is at a place where he can shout mindlessly. Yang speaks back at him. He says that he is shocked that Zhang came out and he had thought Zhang would be too scared to come out. He asks Zhang if Zhang has the commission he owes him. Zhang also wants him to come back to work because he knows how much the company is enjoying from his good work. He says that he will give Yang the commission he wants but Yang should first be a good boy and return back to work. He says he would give Yang about 10,000 for 10 months and as long as he closes at least one single deal from that month till forever. However, that isn't their initial promise. Yang says Zhang is talking like a fart. He reminds Zhang that he clearly promised him a 20% commission on a successful case without any strings attached. Zhang refuses to admit fault. He asks Yang where the proof of that promise is. He asks if he has any proof, or if he is just deciding based on what he remembers that he was promised. He mocks Yang asking him that what if he was promised that he would work for free for the rest of his life, will he like to redeem that promise? Yang claims that everyone in the company was there when he made the promise. He says that everyone heard him when he said it, and the evidence is in everyone's mind. So Zhang asks the other workers in the room if any one of them heard that promise. No one wants to jeopardize their work because they want to be a witness of truth, so no one supports Yang. The first worker says that they didn't hear anything, and it must have been Yang who heard it wrongly. He looks at the workers. He wonders if none of them realize that what happened to him that day could happen to any of them next time. And it was just his turn that day. And it could be their turn soon. Another of his colleague tells him that Zhang has been extraordinarily kind to him. So he should hurry up and thank Zhang so he can come back to work. Zhang also feels proud of himself. He claims the only reason he is giving Yang a second choice is that he loves Yang's talent. And that's Yang's last choice. So Yang shouldn't be insensitive. He commands Yang to get back to his seat and get to work. He says he has to go downstairs and speak to the building management about renewing of the leases so he doesn't have time to waste with Yang. He claims he is doing a great job asking Yang if he thinks it's easy for him as a boss to support many employees. The other employee bow to him, and they tell him that they should all be grateful to Zhang for giving them a good platform for them to show their good talents. However, Yang doesn't feel like an employer is doing his employee a favor by paying them. He says it is really unreasonable that he came out to work just to earn money, but he can't even get the salary that he deserves, yet they want him to be grateful for finding a work platform. He tells them that he has recorded all they have said, and he will be filing for an arbitration right now. He claims he can't believe that the law won't be able to control Zhang. Zhang doesn't want that audio to leak anywhere. He screams and asks his employee to close the gate and grab Yang's phone. 
they go to the gate to close it, and when they do, Mr. Chen wonders what has happened in the office. He wonders if nothing has happened to his new boss. Zhang tells Yang that he will only allow him to leave there alive if he deletes the recording he has made. Filled with anger, Zhang takes one of his company's computers and breaks it hoping it will make Yang scared. He then pushes the accusation of breaking the computer on Yang. He tells Yang that everyone saw that he broke the company's computer, so his salary was deducted to pay for the computer he has broken. But Yang tells him that his recording is still going on and that what Zhang had just done has been recorded. He tells Zhang that there is no way he could escape from what he has done. He also explains that there is a feature on his phone which is called Cloud Backup. He asks Zhang if he doesn't understand that even if he deletes what is on the phone, everything there is still backed up in another place he can retrieve it from. Zhang realizes he is trapped. He calls Yang a lowlife, asking him how he dared to come to his office and record him. He says that Yang is so shameless. One of the workers who is supporting what Zhang has done wonders why Zhang is trying to have a conversation with Yang. He tells Zhang that there is no point talking with Yang and they can just beat him up, destroy the phone and even destroy the backup on the phone so that when the police arrive, they will say that Yang came to their office to smash their computer and they had to forcefully subdue Yang. It turns out that Chen is eventually done with his call. He starts banging on the door so they can open the door for him. Zhang goes to open the door to Chen and he wonders why Chen has decided to visit their company in person. He says that he was just about to come down and talk to Chen about how they can renew the lease. However, Chen tells him that he isn't there because of rent, and that he is there to see Yang. He asks them why they are locking the company's door in the middle of the day. He hopes that they haven't done anything to Mr. Yang. Zhang is shocked that Yang has a connection with Chen. He asks Chen which Mr. Yang he is talking about, but Chen asks him which other Mr. Yang it could be. He points to Yang, who is standing there, and says it's the same Yang he is referring to. He tells Zhang that Yang is the new boss of their building and asks if they are trying to do something bad to the new boss. Zhang exclaims in a very shocked manner. He couldn't believe his ears. Do Chen really mean that Yang isn't the new boss of their building? Chen enters the office, and he goes to meet his boss. He asks Yang what is happening in that office. He apologizes for being late and tells Yang that he shouldn't have taken the call in the first place. But Yang tells him that he is fine and he doesn't have to worry. He tells Chen that Chen has come at the right time. Zhang goes to meet Chen. He doesn't want to believe that Yang is really the new boss and asks Chen what he means by the new boss of their building. Chen explains to him that, for the records, Yang has paid $2 billion in full to buy that property, and he is now the bona fide owner of the property. He explains further to Zhang that Yang is now in charge of the property, and he can do anything he wants with it. The staff is shocked. Some of them feel that Yang really spent over $2 billion on a property, and they wonder why he had come to work at that office in the first place. They feel that he has just come there to experience the life of a rich kid. They remember that he had left the office just the day before, and the following day he bought the entire building. And they conclude that what Yang has done is a clear sign of revenge. The manager of the finance company who had suggested that Zhang beat Yang up doesn't want to believe it either. He knows what can happen to him if it is true that Yang owns the entire company. He whispers to Chen's ears, asking him if it's possible that he had made a mistake. Maybe Yang just has the same name as his new boss, and it's not really Yang that is with them. Chen gets angry at them. He asks them if they are calling him blind and asks them that if he doesn't know who the boss of the company is as the manager, then who should know who the boss is? Zhang bows to apologize. He tells Yang that he shouldn't be angry and that everything that had just happened in that place was a misunderstanding. He holds Zhang's hands telling him that it is true that he has done something wrong and he should be punished. But instead of accepting his punishment, he is ready to double back the salary he is owing Yang, and he will pay it immediately so they can resolve the misunderstanding between them. Chen doesn't understand what is happening. He hasn't seen Yang in that building before, so to resolve his dilemma, he asks Yang if he has worked at that company before and if they are indeed owing him a salary. Yang replies affirmatively, and Chen gets angry. He directs his anger to Zhang, reminding him of the clause in their lease agreement. He tells him that it is written in their lease agreement that they must operate in good faith according to the law. Otherwise, they have the right to terminate the contract and claim got triple of the rent. He asks Zhang if he has forgotten that the clause existed in their contract. That makes Yang happier because it means he has another means of getting money. He brings out his phone, which he has used to record all Zhang has said to him, and he asks if there is indeed a clause like that and tells Chen to listen to the conversation between himself and Zhang. The conversation starts from when Zhang has told him that if he wants a commission, then it's fine, but he has to obediently come back to work and after every month, 
As long as he settles at least a single deal every month, he will be given 10,000. Jang realizes that he has lost the whole fight. He begs Yang to listen to him and tells him that they should let bygones be bygones. He says he will give Yang triple of the commission that he is owing him, and Yang should please delete the recording so that they can settle the matter amicably. But Yang refuses his offer. He doesn't need money. He is already richer than he expects himself to be. He tells Jang that he just wants the amount he is owed and nothing more than that. He tells Chen that the matter is left to the management of the building, and he is sure they will handle it in such a way that he will be satisfied with their work. He attempts to leave the office, and Chen bows to him, telling him not to worry and that he will do everything the way he wants and even more than he wants. Zhang screams that he should stop. Zhang tells him that he has already given him, and he has admitted defeat. He asks Yang why Yang wants to drive him to the end. He begs Yang to leave him a way out of the situation and asks Yang who he is sure that he won't fall into his hands in the future too. However, Yang tells him that he is the kind of person who never leaves his enemy with a way out. He says that if he felt a little bad about the company, he would have never left the company in the first place. So the fact that he left means he doesn't care about Zhang and he won't give him a way out. He asks Zhang to leave his way as he wants to leave. Zhang asks him if he is sure that there is no way he can allow him out of that situation. But Yang wonders who he is to have that kind of conversation with him now. Zhang realizes the only way he can evade responsibility is for that phone to be destroyed. So he commands all his staff that if anyone can snatch that phone away from Yang's hand, he will give the person 50,000 immediately. He expects that they will all jump at the deal, but that deal isn't enough for them to lose their integrity. He decides to increase the reward and says he will give them 100,000 cash immediately when he sees that no one stands up to do his demands. He adds that he will also double the salary of the successful person. Again, no one stands up to meet his demands. Yang laughs at him. He asks him if he thinks his words still have any credibility. He says that Jan can't even give him the commission he deserves for the orders he has made, and he thinks he will keep up for such a promise. He asks him if he thinks everyone is stupid enough to remove this mere buff. Yang holds his phone tightly in his hands so no one will collect it, and Chen takes his phone to call the management floor. Chen commands that all of the office staff and building security should come to the 15th floor immediately. About 10 minutes after Chen makes that call, all the workers on the first floor arrive on the 15th floor. They wonder what is going on and why their manager has called them into that room because such has never happened before. One of them expresses her concern to her colleague, who tells her she has no idea, but she also knows that all the security guards are at that same place. They wonder if the owner of the Jingyan advertisement, Zhang, offended their manager. Chen stands there courageously, asking to see which of the worker will go and touch Yang as Zhang has commanded them to. Zhang starts sweating. He never could have imagined that he would be in that situation just because he didn't give a staff commission. He regrets all that has happened, but it is too late. On the other hand, Yang is excited. He tells Chen that he will leave everything happening to Chen's hand as he wants to leave immediately. Again, Chen reassures him that he doesn't have to worry and he will ensure he will do everything beautifully the way he wants it to be done. Before leaving the office, Yang addresses the other staff. He knows that Zhang has equally been treating them horribly. He tells them that he is sure Z will be out of business that day. But while he is settling accounts with Zhang, why doesn't they hurry up and take revenge on whatever they want to give back to Zhang for how he has treated them? He tells them that if they don't take what they want to take now, when Zhang is fined and he goes bankrupt, they won't be able to take back what he is owing them, and they will get nothing. The first worker screams. He says that Zhang often forces them to work overtime, and he doesn't pay them for the extra time they have worked. Another one says that Zhang forces them to sign shady contracts. One says that he also deducts their wages without any reason. It turns out that it is his manager, Lai who has always supported Zhang in whatever he does, and it's also this same Lai that first brought the suggestion that they should beat Yang up. Zhang can't watch and allow Lai to add to his punishment. He asks Lai not to throw stones at him as they do everything together, but Lai refuses. Lai says that he is against sin and he has always hated Lai, but he couldn't resist what Zhang is doing because he had to work under him. He tells Zhang that now that Yang is leading their charge to report him, he has to stand up against evil to the end. Yang knows how much they have both manipulated all the staff, he knows they are in it together. And he comments that Lai's leg is really fickle. Following everything that happens that day, Jiang's advertisement company is closed up. He stands in front of the closed office telling Yang that he has ruined him, but he won't allow him to get away with it. But Yang tells him that he is the one who ruined himself, and he asks him not to blame anyone for his misfortune and says that there are rules in the world and he doesn't get to do whatever he wants to do just because he is the boss. Yang addresses the staff. 
he tells them that he is going to open an advertising agency soon and he will be using that same office. He asks them if they are interested in working under him, and they can come over if they are interested. The staff screams that they are interested since they are all already out of job. Lai also calls that he is interested in working under Yang. But Yang asks Jim if he is in Jiang's loyal slave. He says that there is no point in taking a loyal slave. He tells Lai to get out, telling him that he isn't welcome in the new company. Lai starts crying. He kneels to beg Yang telling him that if he goes to the labor arbitration with Yang to Su Zhang, will Zhang accept him then? Yang refuses. He tells him that even if he goes to kill Zhang, he still won't give him a job. He says that there is no bottom line for people like him, and there is no way he can keep him. He kicks him and tells him to get out of there. He addresses the other staff. He tells them that in half a month at the most, they can come back to work. From that moment on, the company management will be handed over to one of the staff, Zhu Ziali, and if any of them have an issue, they should go directly to Zhu Ziali. He tells them that the break he has given them is for them to have a holiday they should go home and rest for a while, and they should come back when they get the notice to come back so they can work properly. Zhu Ziali can't imagine that he has made her the manager. She asks him again to be sure she has heard right. She tells him that she doesn't have any experience working as a manager, and she fears that she may make a mistake. However, he is sure of his decision. He admonishes her that it is okay to be inexperienced and that as long as she learns the rope, she will be fine. She is glad about the position. She reassures him that she will listen to him well and she will study hard so she can do well in that position. They cheer themselves up so they can bow to their new boss. They bow to Yang and tell him thank you. He attempts to leave the company, and they all wave to him to greet him goodbye and he greets them back, telling them that he will see them soon. He returns to the park so he can continue his car hailing services. He has executed the two revenge he has in mind, and with those revenge done, he feels it's the best time for him to return to work. He enters the car, and he gets a notification that he has a new order about 500 meters from his location. He feels the passenger is on his way to where he is going, and he can take her, he accepts the offer, and he starts going. He sees that the passengers are a young lady and a man. The lady seems familiar to him, and he says she looks like his college friend, Wang Lixin. He feels that he can't be a coincidence. When he gets nearer to them, he confirms that it is really his college friend. They take the cab, and when Wang enters the cab, she recognizes him, and she wonders how come he is the one riding the car. He greets her and tells her that it is indeed a coincidence that they are meeting again in that situation. He asks her if she is hanging out with her boyfriend. She feels it is about time that she introduces him to her partner. She introduces her partner as Jiang Jiankun, so that means he is encountering another Jiang. I mean, that will be the third Jiang he is encountering in that manhua. She tells Jiang that the driver is her university classmate, Yang Chen. She tells him that at that time, when they are at the university, he was the top student in their class, and he was also very handsome. In Zhang's head, the first thing he imagines is that Yang is very popular with the girls. She tells him yes and tells him that many girls in their school then liked Yang. It was just a pity that, as of then, he had a girlfriend. She concentrates on Yang again. She asks him if he has broken up with his then-university girlfriend. She feels it's a bad way to ask a man if he has broken up with his girlfriend. So she rephrases the question and asks him how far they are now. She asks him if he will end up getting married to her. However, he tells her that they have broken up, and she, therefore, comments that it was a shame that he turned down all the girls that wanted him in the university to pick his girlfriend and asks him if he regrets his decision now. He replies to her that he only turned her down and there is no point why she is bringing up that issue. She tells him that she didn't mean it in that way. She says that at least she has to thank him for turning her down because if he didn't turn her down in public and scolded her back then, she would be living a miserable life with him at the moment. Jiang realizes that Yang also humiliated his girlfriend in public. He asks her how he had humiliated her, and she explains that she was just 19 when she confessed her love to him, as at then, he could only reject her, but he couldn't humiliate her. Yang tries to change the conversation. He tells them that so much time has gone since that issue happened, and he has forgotten what he even said to reject her then. However, he tells her that if he had said something bad to her when they were having that conversation, he is very sorry and he is apologizing to her now. Zhang feels like he is poor. He tells him that since he is sincerely apologizing to her, his company is short of a clerk, and the job of the clerk is only to serve tea in the office and clean up. He asks Yang if Yang would like to stop driving the car and come work with him at his company. His girlfriend also feels proud. She tells him that her boyfriend is the planning manager of Heian Advertising Company, and if he goes to work under her boyfriend, she can ask her boyfriend to take care of him. 
Contrary to how they have thought he would jump at that offer, he rejects the offer without any doubt. He tells them that he thinks he is fine driving an online car and he doesn't need a job as a clerk. He feels the heat in the car, and he turns down the window. Wang shouts at him. She asks him why he is opening the window. She tells him that he should close the window immediately and turn on the air conditioning because she feels so hot. He tries to explain to her that the order didn't make it compulsory for him to turn on the air conditioning. He says that it is not impossible for him to turn on the air conditioning for them if they want, so they should say a few nice words to him, and he will turn on the air conditioning for them when he is happy with them. Zhang gets angry at him. He asks him what he is talking about, and says that if not for the fact that he was Wang's college classmate, he would have done hell to him a long time ago. He commands Yang to turn on the air conditioning and not make him angry. Wang tries to control her boyfriend, and she tells him not to be that impulsive with Yang because Yang is driving. She tells him that if he hits Yang, he will be finished when the car goes out of control because they may all die. She tries to speak to Yang in a calm manner. She reminds him that they are old school friends and he should please turn on the air conditioning, and she will pretend like what has happened didn't happen at all. She threatens that if he doesn't switch on the air conditioning, she will give him a bad review and also lay a complaint against him, and he can't blame her when she does so. He asks them if they think they can scare him with bad reviews, and he tells them that they can get out of his car if they know they aren't interested in riding in his car. Zhang angrily tells him to pull over the car so they can stop. As he has asked, Yang stops the car, Zhang comes out of the car with his girlfriend, and he asks Yang to also come out. He screams to Yang to come out of the car, but Yang refuses to come out. Zhang hits the car's door, telling Yang to come out, but Yang remains inside the car. He tells them that he isn't going to get out of the car and that since it is hot, they can just take their there and enjoy the summer sun. He zooms off immediately without saying anything more. Zhang runs after the car screaming that Yang should stop, but Yang doesn't respond to him. They don't know where they are. Wang asks her boyfriend if he knows which location they are. They look ahead, trying to see if there is a way they can get a ride. But they see that they are at a bridge over the river, and it seems like parking is not allowed on that bridge so they can't even ask anyone for a ride there. They both wonder what they should do. Angrily, Zhang decides that he will give Yang a bad review and also lay a complaint. But if only they know that is the best way they can reward him. And that's what he is looking forward to. Zhang believes that his bad review will put Yang out of work. Immediately after they give him the bad review, Yang receives a notification that he has gotten a new bad review. The system congratulates him for earning a bad review and rewards him with 2 million in cash. He laughs at them, saying that they must be having a nice time under the sun over a bridge in the middle of the day with no help coming for them. Suddenly, he checks their college class group, and he sees that Wang has left a message on the group. She says that she went out and ordered a car hailing, and when she entered, she saw it was Yang driving the car. She thought she could help him as a classmate, but he threw her out of the car on a bridge. All the students start asking several questions, some asking him why he is now doing car hailing, and others asking why he resigned from his advertising company. He decides to reply to them. He tells them that he had quit his job a few days ago and he is driving an online car for a while. He tells them that if they feel ashamed to be with him, they can pretend not to know him whenever they see him. He tells them that he will send the recording of the car trip to customer service for review, and he will also send the recording to the group so they can all hear what Wang did. Wang gets furious, she knows what she has done is bad, and she tells Zhang that Yang has sent the recording to the group, and now everyone in the group is blaming her. They both walk on the bridge, and Zhang promises that he is going to kill Yang. He tells Wang to send Yang a message that she is treating him to a party at the Hing Hotel on Sunday so they can lure him in and she will see how he is going to make him look bad in front of all their classmates. Wang supports the idea. She commends her boyfriend that he is smart and they can really get Yang. He gets a notification that Wang wants to invite him for a dinner at Ning Hotel to apologize for what she has done the last time. He says whether he will go to the party or not depends on how he feels on that day, and if he is in a good mood, he will attend the party. He says it is a beautiful day and he is sure that Wang and her boyfriend must be enjoying themselves on the bridge. He gets another order, and he goes to pick up his passenger. When he gets to the location, he calls that the car has arrived and asks the passenger where she is. It is raining, so she asks him how he expects her to get there in the rain. She tells him that he should come to where he is so he can get her there. He tells her to wait, saying that he will come there to pick her up. He picks up an umbrella from his car so he can go pick her up. He enters the rain to get to where she is, and when he gets there, he asks if she is his passenger, Ms. Zhang. At this point, we have to ask the author what he has with the name Zhang because this is the fourth Zhang that Yang will be meeting in the course of this story. 
He gets to her with an umbrella, but instead of her to humbly walk into the car with the umbrella, she complains that there is water on the ground and she can't walk across the water. She sits there expecting him to carry her to the car, but he refuses to do that. He tells her that he doesn't offer that kind of service except she is disabled. She asks him to look at her new shoes. She asks him if he knows how expensive those shoes are and there is really so much water on the ground, and she fears that her show may get wet if she walks to the cab. It really seems like Yang has a thing with toxic passengers. She further tells him that she knows a lot of people who will be very happy to carry her, but she hasn't given them a chance instead, she is giving him that chance to carry her. However, he doesn't care about how many people are queuing to carry her. He tells her that all those things she is saying don't matter to him, and all he knows is that he doesn't provide that kind of service. The best he can do for her is to give her an umbrella, and he has done so, so she should walk to the car by herself. He stretches the umbrella to her, but she calls him a dumb bastard. She collects the umbrella from him, and she reluctantly walks to the car herself. She tells him that even before their trip starts, he has already made her unhappy. She warns him that he shouldn't make her unhappy again till the trip ends because if he does so, she will make a complaint against him. The trip begins, and without giving a comment about the stupid words she has said, Yang tells her that she should fasten her seat belt because he is departing already. As they almost reach her destination, he tells her that when she arrives at her destination, she can get off with her personal belongings, but she refuses. She insists that there is too much water on the floor and she has gotten her shoe dirty. She claims that she can't walk back on her own again, and he has to drive the car upstairs for her to come down. Like driving the car upstairs, it's really impossible, and it doesn't sound reasonable to a normal person. He reminds her that he is driving a car and not a plane. How is it possible for him to drive her upstairs? He offers to drive her to the door outside her location, telling her that she is just a few steps inside the house. Instead of reasoning with him, she screams at him and tells him that she doesn't care. She tells him that he has to take her upstairs or she will leave a very a bad review for him and even file a complaint. She reassures him that she isn't joking about what she has said, and if he doesn't do what she wants, she will file complaints against him. It's not like he cares about their reviews and complaints, so he tells her that she should get down and file her complaints. When she realizes that her threat about filing a complaint isn't working, she tells him that she wouldn't leave the car unless he takes her upstairs. He switches off the car's engine, he comes out of the car, closes the door, and tells her to remain in the car for as long as she wants. He tells her that he is off for a late night snack and he is leaving her. She opens the door and comes out of the car. She yells at him and tells him that he should wait as he will get her complaints report soon. She picks up her phone, and she types her complaints. He passes behind her and purposely splashes the water on the floor on her body, then he enters the car to leave. He zooms off the car in a fast manner and splashes more water on her body. Ms. Zhang angrily jumped away from the roadside while calling him a derogatory name. Zhang, unaffected by her behavior, left the scene contently. He was reminded that there are all kinds of people in the world, including those like Ms. Zhang who feel entitled to special treatment. Despite her outburst, he remained at peace and tried to enjoy his cup of tea, but realized he had run out. He gets another notification from his portal. He receives yet another bad review along with a complaint. However, the system rewarded him with 50 grams of dried tea leaves from the rare Da Hong mother tree, which was exactly what he needed. The system instructed him to open the truck to claim his reward, and he eagerly did so. He is glad that the system really knows his worries and how they can solve them. He comments that it is really a great system. However, compared to the other rewards he has gotten, he wonders why his reward this time around is just 50 grams, and he says it is so less. However, the fairy tells him that although he doesn't know, the tea of Mother Tree Da Hong is more expensive than gold and the previous auction done for that tree was for 20 grams, and the auction price was 200,000, and now the tea is a rare item that money can't buy. He is so shocked that the tea is really expensive. 